Welcome to Watch China Daily Big Talk. Our guest today is Emerald Cotton, Indonesia Ambassador to China. Hello, Ambassador. Welcome to receive our interview. Thank you very much for interviewing me. During Chinese uh, Premier Wen Jiabao's visit in late April this year, Wen stated that the China and Indonesia should int- intensify the multilateral uh, cooperation in trade and economy by making full use of free trade areas uh, policies between China and ASEAN. And how do you evaluate that statement? And would you introduce the current situation uh, of the, uh, China and uh, Indonesia's uh, economic ties? Yes, you are absolutely right when you mention that Indonesia and China should uh, make use of any necessary means to increase the bilateral uh, trade between the two friendly countries. As a matter of fact, uh, China and ASEAN countries have signed what we call as China and ASEAN Free Trade Agreement uh, implemented last year. As well as at the bilateral level, Indonesia and China also have a series of agreements to increase uh, our trade volume. As a matter of fact, after the signing and the implementation of the ASEAN uh, China Free Trade Agreement, the trade volume between Indonesia and China increased tremendously. When I came here a year ago, uh, before the uh, ASEAN China Free Trade Agreement implemented, uh, the trade volume between Indonesia and China was around 28.2 billion US dollar. And after the implementation of ASEAN and China Free Trade Agreement and supported by a series of uh, uh, bilateral uh, engagements, our trade volume increased amounting to 42.7 billion US dollar. So there is, there has been a more than 50 percent increase. That I think is a healthy sign that the uh, ASEAN and, and China Free Trade Agreement as well as a series of bilateral engagements conducted by Indonesia and China have indeed benefited uh, both uh, sides. Although uh, we have to admit that a couple of industries in Indonesia suffered, like those uh, involved in producing uh, clothing, footwear, furniture, mm-hmm. and one or two other sectors. But overall, the trade volume between the two uh, friendly countries increased tremendously. And uh, when also held some the hope that and China and Indonesia will work together to uh, enhance bilateral cooperation in trade, investment, energy, and infrastructure, and some other sectors. And... Uh, what content of cooperation, such as high-speed railway uh, projects, is included in the sector of infra- infrastructure? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to underline the point that the um, economic development uh, of China is uh, immense and very impressive because you have been able to uh, construct infrastructure across China. So Indonesia would also like to copy the success story of China. We also decided to also uh, 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 construct infrastructure projects across Indonesia in order to be able to move the people, the goods, as well as services across Indonesia, within Indonesia, and outside of Indonesia. So we need transportation, sea transportation, air transportation, and land transportation. And China is very successful in that regard. So that is why my government, uh, in a couple of days, will come and visit Beijing to try to convince your government to help us construct infrastructure projects across Indonesia. That would uh, involve a lot of uh, resources, not only resources, but as as well as technology. So we... I would like to uh, really uh, urge uh, the Chinese governments as well as 
the Chinese investors to come and invest in Indonesia in our infrastructure uh, projects, amounting to more or less wa- more than 150 billion US dollar. As ASEAN matches forward the goal of uh, integration in 2015, and uh, the bloc is uh, considering the playing a bigger role in international affairs and also in some um, special cases. And what role will Indonesia play in this integration process? Well, Indonesia, first of all, I would like to uh, convey to you that there is, there has been actually a program what we call as uh, intra-ASEAN integration uh, 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 program through which ASEAN countries are requested to help those considered to be lagging behind within ASEAN uh, to also uh, increase and improve their economic capability to match uh, those of uh, uh, other ASEAN countries considered to be already advanced in terms of economy. And we are lucky enough that our dialogue partners, our dialogue countries, uh, especially China, Japan, and South Korea, have also contributed in that regard. And we are very thankful uh, that the, uh, uh, the position of Indonesia and China as far as ASEAN rule is concerned is of identical in nature. We would like to see that the regional architecture uh, uh, to be formed uh, where ASEAN will always continue to play critical role will continue to play uh, a, a, a driving force. And China endorses this concept. So that is why we always uh, work on that basis, that ASEAN will continue to be the focal point of the regional cooperation supported by China, supported by Japan, and supported by uh, South uh, Korea. What we call as ASEAN plus one, ASEAN plus China, ASEAN plus South Korea, ASEAN plus Japan, and all together ASEAN plus three. And recently, uh, the Indonesia's uh, permanent representative to ASEAN uh, told the media that the ASEAN's leader have decided to uh, push for two changes. The first is the uh, establishment of a network among uh, peace uh, peace. Uh, peacekeeping centers in ASEAN members. The second is to let 10 ASEAN member countries speak in a single voice. What do you think of it? Well, certainly Indonesia has been very active in these peacekeeping uh, operations across uh, the globe, as well as uh, China has. And we, we are very glad that so far we haven't been able to identify any flash points in our region as to uh, to be worried about uh, you know uh, having a trouble spots in our region. So we uh, welcome the role of China uh, in this uh, peacekeeping operations, and Indonesia has always been uh, active in championing the idea of uh, basically uh, uh, urging uh, ASEAN countries to put aside peacekeeping uh, forces in, uh, in, uh, in time of need. So, uh, and again, uh, China has never been uh, reluctant in that regard. We are thankful that we have a very genuine partner in making uh, the region safe as well as in trying to also uh, put aside some forces in time of need in order to get involved in what we call as peacekeeping operations across the globe. How does uh, Indonesia see the influence of China and the United States in the Southeast Asia region? Well, uh, we have to be uh, objective in that regard. China is a country uh, that Indonesia values highly. Uh, China is a country within our region 
with its tremendous uh, potentials, uh, we see China as an opportunity. I've always been uh, active in promoting this idea that we see China as an opportunity rather than as a challenge. That is why we would like to take benefit from your development, rapid development. Indonesia would like to take benefit from it. So uh, there, is, there will be no peace, stability, and prosperity in the region without participation of China as well as Indonesia, being the two biggest nations in our respective region. So it is indeed mandatory for the two countries to work together in order to be able to help establish security, prosperity, as well as uh, 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 stability in the region. So stability, security, and prosperity can only be provided for by combining the joint uh, efforts from China and Indonesia as well as the United States of America. United States of America is a global power. So uh, certainly there, is, there, there will be no uh, uh, issue across the globe can be resolved without active participation of the United States. So we should not, you know, uh, we should not see our cooperation with China would in any way or shape uh, diminish our cooperation with the U.S. It, 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 should also, it should also be the other way around. So the two uh, big countries, the U.S. as well as China, should also cooperate in order to be able to create an environment in our region conducive to development. As for folk communications across the two nations, such as tourism. The most popular uh, tourist destination for Chinese tourists is Bali. Uh, last year, there were around 250,000 Chinese tourists came and visited Bali. Although Indonesia is an, uh, an, uh, an, uh, an island, as an island country, has a lot of uh, tourist destinations. So we would encourage, for example, the Chinese tourists to come, say, for example, to see the Sampokong Temple in Semarang. And uh, this Sampokong Temple was constructed by Admiral Cheng He back in 15th century ago. It's very unique because the temple accommodates the rituals of any religion, of any uh, faith. So Muslims go there and pray there as well. Uh, 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 followers of Confucianism go and pray as well over there. And the Christian, Christians also can go and pray in that temple. It's very unique. So I would like to use this opportunity to appeal to Chinese, to, uh, Chinese to, uh, tourists to come and visit Sampokong Temple in Samarang in the middle of Java Island. We have also a lot of uh, attractive uh, tourist destinations like uh, in Manado we have what we call a sea uh, uh, attraction where you can dive, do your snorkeling. You can go also to the largest or the biggest uh, lake volcano in the whole world, Lake Toba. Uh, that exploded 75 million years ago, uh, uh, devastating the whole world. So uh, we have also a lot of uh, 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 attractive uh, tourist destinations in uh, Papua, for example, and in Kalimantan, where you can see orangutans rehabilitation. Uh, this is a very protective species. Uh, that you can only see uh, in Indonesia as well as Malaysia and Brunei Darussalam. So there are a lot of uh, attractive tourist destinations in Indonesia. It's not only Bali. Indonesia is not Bali. Certainly Bali is not Indonesia. What is your expectation for the China-Indonesia relationship? My expectation, as I mentioned, there will be no peace, 
stability and prosperity in, the re- in this region without the cooperation of two big nations. So my expectation is the relationship between Indonesia and China should be developed from time to time. Uh, you are two big nations, we are two big countries. We have all the potentials to help establish an order in our, in our region in order to help also the region develop uh, in, a, uh, in order to be able for the region to develop itself as an engine of economic growth. As a matter of fact, currently many experts uh, say that uh, our region is the engine of growth of the world's economy. So there is no other way but cooperating, moving toward the future uh, between Indonesia and, and, and China.